Welcome to Fix It for Josh's Sake. Today we're going to tackle another project on this 1972 Articat Lynx. This is a 292 Kawasaki motor in here. What I want to do today is I want to focus on this gas tank. It's not terrible and actually it's pretty clean inside, but it's a little rusty on the outside. I want to make sure that uh, the ports are good in it, that the check valve, the backflow check valve is good in it. All that kind of stuff. So uh, you're welcome to join along with me as uh, we fix it for Josh's sake. To get right into it, the way they hold the gas tank on is these clips right here are bolted to the tunnel. Uh, what we got to do is you got to pop off all of the snaps down the seat line. And then once the seat comes back, uh, this gas tank theoretically should slide out. Now underneath here is some rubber padding that at times can get pretty gross and gunky, but I'm going to start snapping these off and see how easy it goes and I'll keep you posted. I really love how cool these old cat, already cat snaps are. They're pretty funky, but the reality is they've been, they've been on there a really long time. So got myself some tools here and I'm going to try to pry those off without the back sticking to the aluminum tunnel. We'll see if this works. All right, this is going pretty good. So if I get right up under there and, and get a nice grip, these pop off real easy. I guess I was expecting this to be a little bit more difficult, but uh, I guess we're having a good day. I'm gonna get all of these uh, snaps off, get the seat out of the way so we can see if we can pull that tank back. Once you have all the snaps loose, all we have to do is come back here, get a lift up here, the trunk will stay in place and then the seat comes up and voila we have some real nice access here to the gas tank it's interesting the kind of sins that are told when you uh, remove a seat like right here man that track must have been running loose and right here are the rivet points for some tunnel protectors some high fax tunnel protectors I'm guessing those are pretty shot too. So we're going to have to do a little uh, inspection underneath of this tunnel. But first, we're going to keep working on getting this gas tank out of here. So like I said, it's pressure fit in here with some foam pushing up in there. And it's literally a process of reefing back as hard as you can on both sides to get this, this pressure or this, uh, yeah, this pressure fit to come back. So I'm going to muscle it out of there and we'll see how it looks. Okay, with a little back and forth, back and forth, uh, we're getting to the point here where we can uh, pull that out of there and start to see the good stuff here. This is the reason I wanted to be looking here is because I wanted to see if uh, these are any good. We need to check the backflow check valve in there, make sure that's good as well. All right, things are going good. Definitely feeling good about this. That tank is nice and shiny inside of there, even though the outside's a little crusty. I'm just letting the old gas drain out of here, but uh, it's a really good feeling when you look inside of a tank and it's not rusty and crusty. Still got good shiny steel in there. I think this tank's going to be a keeper. Now that I got most of the gas drained out of it here and I have it upside down, barely anything trickling out, I'm going to go get myself a big crescent wrench and undo this collar so we can pull this out. And we're going to look at the uh, backflow check valve in here. Now, that's really important. If you don't have that in here, your carburetor has a really hard time sucking the gas from the tank all the way up into the diaphragm. So, uh, to me, it's the crit most critical thing that I can do to make sure that my engine always has a prime. It's always holding gas uh, ready to suck into the engine. Is to make sure that backflow check valve is, is in good condition. So, we're going to do that next. Sometimes these can be stuck like crazy and they're really, really hard to get off. I'm lucking out today in that uh, this one seems to seems to be pretty loose. So uh, it literally cracked open that nicely. And wow, does that make a project work well? Uh, if it wouldn't have cracked open, good. I would have went and got some uh, Marvel Mystery Oil or some Penetrating Oil or some Deep Creep, something like that. Let it soak for a while um, and then 
break it loose, but uh, yeah, this worked out really well. And to prove my suspicion, look at how gumped up that is. Uh, and also, where's our check valve? There is no backflow check valve here. So this would have sucked to start because we would have had to suck gas about a foot and a half from this port all the way up to the carburetor every single time. Um, I got a brand new backflow check valve that I'm going to put on here with some fresh lines and it's going to make our life really easy. Well, would you look at that? Just look at it. Well, there's the uh, backflow check valve and there's the gas line that should have been connected to this little piece right there. So I would guess somebody used some gas line that eventually just rotted apart fell off and it's rolling around in there. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get that out of there, huh? You know the, how they say that necessity is the mother of invention? Well, look at this vice grip, man. I bought this a while ago because I needed to get uh, some stuff out of a gas tank a long time ago. And this tool has proved itself super handy. I mean, look at this. It goes right in there. I can grab onto things. And uh, when I'm not holding this phone, I'm going to go ahead and get that line and that check valve out of there. So this tool is going to save the day. Here's that check valve I was talking about. Looks like this. And if you look really close down in there, you can see that shiny chrome ball. And that is what uh, keeps the gas from flowing back into the gas tank so that your engine stays primed. Uh, but I want to give another little soapbox spiel here. Do not go down to the hardware store and just buy some crappy clear hose that happens to be quarter inch. Because this stuff is literally crumbling like, like it's uh, cardboard. It's just crumbling and cracking and deteriorating. Now, provided this uh, machine is really old. But, my God, I'm pretty sure the fuel line would not do this. So I'm thinking that this is some aftermarket crap that really wasn't intended for submersion in, in gasoline and oil. So, do yourself a favor. Go get some proper fuel line before you uh, run yourself a check valve in your gas tank. You'll appreciate the service you do for future you when you do that. This cleaned up real good. Just used a stainless steel brush here and scrubbed around all over on it. And this is perfect. This is going to be just exactly the way we need it to be to continue put, putting it in service for the next... Who knows, what should we say, 30 more years? And since that wire brush did such a good job on the fuel ports, I'm gonna use the same brush, scrub around on all this, clean this all up, uh, make sure I don't see any pinholes or anything. I don't believe we have any because it was holding fuel, dumped uh, almost a half a gallon out. So I'll scrub around on it really good, get it ready for paint. While I'm scrubbing around on this, the brush is doing okay, but this uh, cancer-like rust, which is from sitting against the foam padding underneath of the tank and on top of the tunnel, uh, moisture builds up in there and then this stuff kind of gets cancer on it. I love a six and one. I have probably wore out as many six as ones as I have wore out socks. So this tool is definitely worth its weight in gold and I'm gonna use it to scrape off this cancer, get down to steel. Well, that cleaned up pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. I'm gonna move on to the sides now. It's coming together, getting a decent amount of rust off, uh, scrubbing away, I still gotta do the top here. But uh, man, this is an awful lot like work. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be pretty happy when I'm done with this project. Well, I got this uh, scrubbed down pretty good with that wire brush. Good enough for the girls I date anyway. Uh, I got some alcohol here, got a rag, and uh, started wiping around on this, and it's coming clean real good. So I'm going to make sure the entire thing scrubbed down very thorough with alcohol, and then we'll go move on to paint. You can see the last bit of the alcohol drying there, evaporating as I uh, finished up my... Scrubbing it down with a nice clean rag. I'm going to let, uh, let the alcohol evaporate. I'm going to go shake up my rattle can. I know, I know, some of you probably just about lost your shorts when you heard I was going to be using a rattle can, but 
Uh, rumor on the street is that this Rust-Oleum appliance epoxy is fuel resistant and it's pretty much the only thing that uh, is sounding like will resist any spillage uh, when it comes to rattle can paint. I know I could go down to Napa and get myself a real nice uh, body, auto body style paint, but today I am just working on this tank, getting it ready to put back in the sled in uh, the fashion that I feel is best. So we're gonna go ahead and use this epoxy. I also wanted to mention, taped off my threads. It's important to uh, do that because at the end of the day, we need seal, a good seal on each of those spots and getting paint in those really sucks. Uh, I did do that once. Unfortunately, I am telling you from experience, paint in this thread is a real pain, so don't do it. Up here, it's not quite as critical, but it still is nice just to have a nice clean uh, area here. When you uh, get done painting, you can peel the paint off, tape off and have a, a really good, nice looking uh, painted tank. The gas tank has a fresh coat of paint on it, and now I'm looking over here at these pads, and I really am not gonna like myself if I put a nice painted tank on top of the rusty residue that's on this foam. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this back, peel it off, and then I got some new pads, and I'll put these on uh, in place with they got the sticky back like that. I'll put those on, and then that way uh, we have a clean surface, against a fresh painted tank and that should give us a really nice uh, long lasting durable gas situation here that old padding peeled off real nice but before i stick these new pads on i'm going to take a little alcohol and a rag and i'm going to scrub this down really good so that the adhesive on the back of this is able to hold really well to the aluminum there on the tunnel that sure looks nice got the dashboard wiped down a little bit I put the new pads in here. Uh, man, I'm excited. Gonna go get that freshly painted gas tank and get ready to put that in. I got the paint all uh, cured and dried on this tank here. I'm gonna pull off the, the tape there, the masking. Pull that off, start to see this. Uh, things turned out pretty good. Pretty happy with this. I'm going to get that off there with two hands. All right, now that we've got that all unmasked and the paint is dry, we are ready to run some new gas line inside the tank. We're going to run the, the port's going to, you know, thread in here. And I want that inner line to go all the way to the back of the tank. So it's about 12 inches. So I'm going to cut myself 12 inches of Tigon gas line here. Uh, you can either use polyurethane or Tigon when it comes to fuel line. And then I'll put those on here, put one on here, I mean, and uh, that will also have this check valve on the other end of it. And that will protrude into the tank. And then coming out of the tank, we'll figure out our lengths once, once we get to the snowmobile and see the distance we need between the tank here and the carburetor. With that put together, just gonna go ahead and put it in the hole and run it in. And start threading that in there. All right. Now that we have the gas tank over here and the fuel ports here, uh, I like to set my gas tank back a little ways and we're gonna run the fuel line through here. But the reality is when the gas tank is pushed all the way up, it's kind of tough to work in here and push those fuel lines on in there. So, uh, and we're coming up here to the carburetor. What I found that works well is leave the gas tank back a little ways and put your lines on here. And then when you push everything up, you're just gonna have a little, little bit of slack right in here as you come over to the carburetor and it's gonna make life a lot easier. Another important factor is to remember which one of these ports has the check valve on it. I know that it's the short one that has the check valve on it because it's longer inside of the tank and I wanted that to be what uh, the check valve is connected to because the last person had it connected to the short end and that broke off because it only sticks off about a, sticks out about a quarter of an inch. So my check valve 
is on the short one, which is the long part inside. And then this long port is the short part inside. That's where I'm gonna put my return line into because that can just flow right back into the gas tank and it really has no consequence. Uh, now what I did here is I set my gas line down here. We're gonna come up through the hole here in the glove box and then we're gonna bring our fuel line down through these wires. There's a couple of nasty old wires that probably should get some love. And then we can see like right there is the fuel inlet line. So now we know our length where to cut this here. And we'll do the same process for the impulse line coming down through and going into the impulse port as well. Clarification, this is not an impulse line. This is a return line. So impulse line, let's, let's elaborate on that since I Freudian slipped that. This is your impulse line down here and it comes down to the crank. You can see it down there, okay? Now, I'm using black braided hose for my impulse line so that it doesn't collapse on itself. I want as much pulse power to be going into the diaphragm of this carburetor. So I use a braided hose that's not going to flex as much from the pulsing of the crankcase. All right, there it is. Got my lines connected, comes to the dash, comes up. Bottom one's the fuel inlet, top one's the fuel return. Now I'm gonna push this gas tank up into place and uh, whew, see how pretty it looks when it's in there. Well, there you have it. Worked on this gas tank, got it all cleaned up inside, got uh, the check valve properly routed, got the fuel lines properly routed, tank's clean, tank's painted. Now all I have to do is uh, put a little gas in it give this motor a couple pulls and bring it to life. Well, thanks for watching my video today. Uh, I enjoyed working on this project. I hope you enjoyed watching it with me. If you did, uh, feel free to like and to subscribe to my channel. The more that people subscribe, the more other people working on stuff like this have the opportunity to find this video uh, and it helps keep it from getting buried down in the, uh, you know, the archives of YouTube. So, yeah. Thanks for following along. Have a great day. Uh, I enjoyed working on this and fixing it for Josh's sake.